Okay, um, let's not waste any more time and jump right into Telsey's Fanatic Adventures. Where's navigate? Okay, let's do this. I know the um, the event consists of three parts, but I just wanna get this done a a ASAP. I just because I'm genuinely curious what the event. So far, it's good so far. Go to the fountain fishing as a GSC. Alright, what you got? Hmm, that can't be right. Oh, but what if they're real after all? No, that can't be. Mm, but what if there's a chance? Another Are reason you why is there something that's bothering you? Oh no, it's nothing. I'm Della Roche, the representative of the Fontaine Fishing Association. How can I help you? Another reason why Genshin shouldn't or should I say they don't deserve to win best win game for best for the game awards. Till this day they have not fixed the lip sync in this game. Honkai, on the other hand, at least the lip sync in that game is synchronized in most of the dialogue. Genshin, on the other hand, is still out. What the danger? Oh, so you're adventurers! Oh, finally, someone has heard my prayers. Hallelujah! Oh, really bothered by something. Don't worry, you've got two super experienced adventurers right here. We'll take care of anything and everything for you as long as you pay us a little bit of mora. Oh, you are exactly the helpers I need. See, the problem is that the fish around a fishing spot at Arrhenius have just all up and vanished recently. They yes. disappeared too quickly for it to have been the work of human anglers. As the representative of the fishing association, I had planned to go and investigate the area right away. But... <clears throat> right, but unfortunately, but... as the representative of the fishing association, there are a few other errands that I absolutely have to run, so... So, you'd like us to investigate the spot for you? Exactly, you're right, Anamora. So, I thought I could delegate this work to you. Are you two some kind of prophets, knowing exactly what I was going to say like that? Or maybe like the oracles you read about in fairy tales? No, we already told you that we're adventurous. Yeah, we're just really experienced in this kind of we're thing, not so, all. We're not like some... Um, oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, we're not like I'll some prophets where we, where one can predict the, the future for... But don't for, we just need to investigate the missing for, uh, fish? One month it or maybe really ten months ahead of time. Results. No, you mustn't let your guard down. As the representative of the fishing association, I have good reason to believe that the fish have gone missing due to an encounter with the water imps. What the imps? Yes, you're both outlanders, right? Our local fairy tales often speak of a terrifying underwater creature called Thelxi. The story uh -huh. our parents would tell us was always the same. If we went to the water alone, then we'd be snatched away and eaten by a water imp called Thuxy. A child eating water imp? Did they tell you what it looked like? My father would always describe it as a beautiful, multicolored snake woman, while my mother said it had a handsome face. Uh. It's really strange, though, because you'd also hear other people describe it as just a chubby penguin with a deceptive appearance. What? Even though the tales vary regarding its appearance, everyone agrees that it's really dangerous. It lives in an underwater cave surrounded by pallid bones and uses its sensitive nose to track down lonely children who've lost their way. And once it finds a child, it uses its alluring singing voice to lure them into the water before swallowing them all. Pretty terrifying, isn't it? 
uh, reminds me of the the one clown uh, but isn't that pretty in the normal movie for it, a fairy tale? IT. After all, those kinds of stories Penny are the usually clown. made up to help keep children away from danger. First part of the um, but what first part of the fairy tale was inspired by a real you, life tale, just like how people, one vein always has a source. I have been. Um, the same can't be said for the second part of well, the movie. Well, I wouldn't though, call it evidence per se. The second part of the movie is, lately, is literally a shit ton of um, saw a child walk into the water as if he was possessed by um, something. Flashbacks Doesn't and that sound just shit. like he was responding to the call of a water imp. So you mean someone really got Which eaten is why by a water the, imp? The second the second part is it's all really hearsay, as good as so this one, it's hard to confirm. What I understand. But still, they all say this happened on Irenaeus. That's no laughing matter if you ask me. Both the Opera House and the Fountain of Lucene were built there, and the sources of many water veins can be traced to the island as well. Combine that with the mysterious mist, the huge tree with expansive underground roots, and the rumor that the bishops on the island can understand human language. Is it really so shocking that an island so shrouded in mystery could harbor a terrifying water imp as well? Ah! Uh you're pulling our leg. You're just piling on the rumors now. Mm, still, if someone's really been hurt, then we can't just ignore the situation, right, Traveler? Anyhow, we'll go check it out. Oh, marvelous. Then I'll just mark the stretch of water on your map. Don't forget that no matter what, safety always comes first. Aye. You done? Okay. So part one begins. So where to next? Investigate the waters where fish have disappeared from. So let's head right over. Where in the absolute? Oh, right over here. Just so you know, I've already collected all sixty-six. I believe hydrocles in the new um in the new unlock. In the newly unlocked um, fountain area but i already mentioned this on my twitter where you have to do at least these three um three side quests or should i say world quests which are the erinius side quest the nasen whatchamacallit the quest and then the And the um the any where and you have to collect thirteen pages of the enigmatic page world quest. Um, just check out um, uh, just have a look on my, on my Twitter on what are the question what are the quests that needed to be done. These look pretty fresh. Oh, did the water imp get someone again? Let's look around and see if we can find anything else. Okay. I see two <gasps> hydro. Wait! Did you hear something just now? No. Gurgling noises can be heard from the water. The noises grow louder and louder. Until something emerges with a loud splash. Oh, it's Fremine! What is that? Don't get any closer! Paimon? Traveler? May I help I'm you? I'm sorry. I forgot I was still wearing this. Open thy helmet! Fremine! Oh, it's Fremine without okay? key. Paimon nearly missed I'm sorry, I'm not French, him. okay? Shut Thank up. Thank goodness, it was just you wearing your helmet. Don't expect me to... To, huh? to, uh, to fully understand in? French. Thelxi, you say? How surprising. Huh? You know that name too? Or do you know someone else who's trying to investigate the water imp? No. I think our situations are probably unrelated. Then could you tell us about what's going on with you? Sure, if that's in order. I know the name because of one of my employers. 
she noticed the clockwork penguins I brought to the workshop and contacted me through the shop's owner. She has commissioned me to make a special toy. <laughs> Following her request, I've named the toy Thelxie. What? Huh? But isn't it a little creepy to name a toy after a water imp? Uh, wait, hold on! Fremina, you never take commissions from other people! Yeah, but, uh... She made a special request, but out of respect for her privacy, I can't really talk about it. Okay. It's all right, She'll be coming over to check on my progress shortly, and I'll just tell her that you're two of my trustworthy companions. Hearing that, she might be willing to share some information, and you'll be able to continue with your investigation. Huh. Even though you seem a little cold and reserved sometimes, you're still really considerate. Our target isn't necessarily the water imp, though. We're primarily here to investigate the disappearance of the fish! The fish? Ah, uh, I think I may have connected the dots. One. These past few weeks, I've been taking Thelxie for underwater testing every day. The pressure testing makes a lot of noise. And? So, all that about the disappearing fish? Well, it was probably because of me. Ah. Uh. Is Femine preparing for another day of work? Yes, I think that's quite likely as well. Whew. Ooh. In the end, it was just Femine! Pyron spent all this time imagining what a water imp from the fairy tales Ooh. might look like, and it all turns out to be just a hoax. I'm sorry. It sounds like I've created a lot of trouble for everyone else as well. I'll try to finish this commission as soon as possible. Once I'm done, the fish should come back. Ah, uh, thanks for offering. But I can't trouble you any more than I already have. Hey, it's no trouble at all! Didn't you just call us your trustworthy companions? Companions are all about helping each other, you know? But... Don't you need to report back to your commissioner? He's got a point. Nope, that's not how it works. See, Paimon's got these commissioner types all figured out. Even though we were just tasked with finding out why the fish had gone missing. If we tell them now that it was all just a misunderstanding, you can bet they'd just immediately hand us another commission to help them get the fish back. Yeah, we're just really experiencing this kind of thing, that's all. Exactly! So if we can help you finish up your work and get the fish back, that would save us an extra trip! Um... Is that what you'd like to do as well? Yeah, I think I'm once right. Huh. All right, I'll trust your judgment. Please follow me. I've made a makeshift camp over there. Uh. Sorry. Well, let's head over to a framing. I've camp. stored Thelxie in the tent. He can respond to some simple verbal commands. You can try calling his name and see if he'll come over. Whoa, sounds pretty advanced. Let Paimon give it a try. Hey, Thelxy, uh, are you there? What do you It's just a penguin robot. So that's Fermanet's version of Felsi. It's also penguin shaped, just like Pear. Yep. Had Felsi lived in Penguin Town, he'd probably have become great friends with Pear. Where's Penguin Town? Uh, it's not really anywhere famous or important. Don't worry about it. Hey, Felsi. Nice to meet you. Do you know how to say hello? So, can Delxi talk? I wanted to install a language output module, but due to time constraints, I had to give up on the idea. 
as it stands, Thuxy can only output messages that were pre-written into its motherboard. I haven't given him the ability to convert those messages into discernible words, so he can't really talk to us just yet. module, right? Uh, no, there's no need. That wasn't one of my employer's requests. It was just something I wanted to try. What's your employer's request? I have request? two other things I'd like your help with. The first is to do some integration testing on Thelxie's motherboard to make sure he will be able to function properly in most situations. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound too hard. And what's the other thing? The other shouldn't take too long either. You'll need to find Thelxy some colorful shells and coral, so I can craft a weapon for him. Craft a weapon? A weapon? Team? Will Thelxy have to fight? Mm-hmm. Thelxy will need to be able to charge forward with a weapon in hand. Like that brave prince of legend. It's a part of my employer's request. Okay. What an imaginative employer! Naming Thelxy after a water imp, but wanting him to look like a prince? Well, regardless of his role or species, Thelxy's purpose is the same. Just like Pear, he has come to this world to serve as somebody's companion. No. He can react to certain oh. key words, but unfortunately, due to the lack of a translation module, he still can't quite communicate with us. Oh. That's a pity. But anyway, the most important thing right now is for us to get to work. Maybe let's start by doing some testing on the motherboard. That sounds like something we can do here in the camp. Sounds good. Of what testing? The motherboard is on my workbench, so please follow me. Right? Ah, here we go. I have this testing manual, so feel free to reference it if you get stuck. Want to give it a try? It's okay if you don't succeed immediately. I've got a lot of backup boards just in case. I'll give you the try. Okay. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Okay, let's do this. Test the motherboard. So... He bought motherboard. Okay. Oh! Okay. Okay. Press space to begin operation. Complete. Debugging success. Current length of assembly circuit egg. Exit debunking. Okay, so let's talk to minute. You're doing well, just as I expected. We've taken on a lot of similar tasks before, you know. Then let's move on to the underwater part. It's just as I mentioned earlier. We're after colorful shells and coral. Oh, speaking of which, 
you're both already pretty used to Fontaine's underwater environment, right? We are pretty much experts now. Okay, that's good. Just let me know if you ever feel uncomfortable. I'll make sure to stay right by your side. Nah, uh, I think we should go. Oh, go to the body of water feminine mansion. It's two hundred and let me just swim to the lead. Oops. Uh, go to the body of water friendly man. Wait, I. I might eat the Whoa! It should be right over there. We'll be able to find something that'll help us with our search. I was being ambushed. What the hell? All that food. Two hydro pistol fries. Eat. Oh, hit up. Use the echo. This is it. We call this thing an echoing conch. It can detect special reflection waves in the water to help us with all kinds of underwater exploration and excavation efforts. Here, try it. Please. Did you notice any interesting places? The echoing conch should have detected some just now. Let's go check them out. Another here. One, two, three, four, five. Then the second one. one two. <sighs> All right, these should be enough. Let's head back to camp. Uh, thank you for staying out here with me all this time. No matter. Oh, I'm here. Because I need to... What you want call it? Mine 10 items? Where was that? You know what, I'll just focus on the main objective for now and just head back to the camp. I'll just swim back right over there. I think I'm swimming right over there. <sighs> yeah, this, as much as I would love to have a front I want to see the front view, but fine. Is this? Bottom. Where is? Back at the surface. <gasps> it's oh, I see someone.
Again, it sink. Ah, Fremine, you're back. I thought you might have been out diving. I'm sorry, Madame Destray. I must have kept you waiting. I can report, though, that the construction Madame. of Thelxi is going quite smoothly. There's no rush. I'm your employer, not your supervisor. And these two are... Oh, uh, they're two of my trustworthy companions. They're here to help me work on Thelxi. Yes, I see. I suppose it's only natural for someone responsible like you to have some reliable friends. It's really nice to meet you, Madame Destre. Are you Fremini's employer? Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler. Greetings, my new friends. Hello there. Just call me Zoria. You are both so adorable. The sight of you reminds me of little fairies under a cottage roof. Uh... Oh, do you really think so? Do I look like a fairy too? Of course. If my child had <laughs> friends like you, then perhaps he wouldn't have become so obsessed with the tales of water imps. And I wouldn't have had to trouble Fremine here with this commission. Obsessed eh? with the tales of water imps? Ah, so you don't know anything about my request yet? I would have thought Fremine had explained it to you already. Well, Fremine told us that it was a private matter, so he didn't want to just share it willy-nilly. Yeah. I see. So Monsieur Fremine is even more discreet than I had thought. Hmm. As you are assisting him with the project, I believe it'll be beneficial for you to learn more about its vision and history. But it would be quite impolite of me to simply pile all of my troubles on you without your permission. So, would you like to listen to my story? Sure, you can tell us anything. You've already said nice things about us, so we'll try our best to help you get through your troubles. I. Ah, what a lovely little fairy. Then let me think of a way to put my situation into words. Hmm. I'm sure you're already familiar with the tale of the water imps, right? Simply put, mm. parents came up with a story, painting water imps as scary abductors in an effort to convince their children to stay away from the water. Yeah. My child is rather special, however. While most other children are terrified of Thelxi, he's infatuated with him. Eh? In infatuated? With a water imp? What a brave soul. Yes. He told me that he thought the water imp might have just been misunderstood. In his mind, instead of singing to abduct children, the water imp actually sang out of a longing for companionship. As a result, he often goes near the water in secret. Huh. So he wanted to become friends with the water imp so it wouldn't be lonely any longer? What a unique way of thinking. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, little Paimon. He indeed has always stood out from the crowd. He was actually diagnosed with loneliness syndrome when he was only eight years old. Loneliness syndrome? Mm hmm. It's a type of mental disorder. Those affected by it often feel extremely lonely and lose interest in many mundane activities. The syndrome is probably what made him so determined to become friends with the water imp. Is it a very serious disorder? If you were to become afflicted with the disorder, Paimon, you would only be able to say less than a fraction of the words you're saying to the Traveler now. Oh. No! Paimon won't accept that! We would have to find a doctor to help cure Paimon! Paimon has a 2,000 word quota for daily conversations with the Traveler and she won't settle for a single word less! The family doctor has already begun to treat my son. But since the disorder is rare, there aren't many good regimens for treatment. Oof. He's also developed some new symptoms lately, such as uncontrollable delusions. Oh, crap. Huh? Uncontrollable what now? Delusion. Uncontrollable delusions. To put it simply, he can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Oh, fuck. And spends all his time in his fantasy world. That's then, fucked. Then what is he seeing in his fantasy world? It's a dream that he often mentioned to me when he was younger. 
I've compiled what I could yes, understand yes. of his recent rambling. It goes a bit like this. Once upon a time, there was a splendid and magnificent underwater kingdom of water imps on the Celestia Plain, 500 feet beneath the surface. Countless lovely water imps lived in houses made of rainbow shells and corals, tending to sea animals during the day and singing between fields of golden tidalga during the night. Everyone led carefree and blessed lives until the day of the Iridescence Parade, the important festival during which the new king would be crowned. For the festival, all water imps would select the most precious pearl they owned, wrapped it in golden branches and leaves, and offer it to the most beloved prince. And during the day of the parade, the prince would cross a rainbow bridge made from all the offered shells and accept the crown from his father amid the applause of his subjects. Finally, the new king would bless everyone with his well wishes. And as for the prince's name, it's none other than Delcy. Amazing! Your son came up with all of this? He really crafted a lovely fairy tale world for Delcy. It's like a beautiful dream. But perhaps no beautiful dream song. can ever last so long. Telling as a matter of you fact. see, the story ended with a twist. The day of Iridescence Iridis Parade came as expected, but countless monsters also arrived alongside the prince. The monsters were evil and cruel, and they struck fear into all the water imps' hearts. Water imps, adept at singing as they were, could not defend themselves against the monsters. So the kingdom fell, the king was killed, and the water imps were locked behind bars. The rainbow bridge lost its color and crumbled away. The prince was barely able to escape with the help of a mysterious mask individual, but he had already lost everything and could only spend his days singing mournful songs. And just as the prince sang out of loneliness, so could his song only be heard by similarly lonely children. How could the story end like this? Is that Damn. kind of fantasizing what caused your son to develop his loneliness syndrome? Well, it'd be more accurate to say that it was the syndrome that caused such terrible delusions to manifest. But in any case, the biggest problem is the patient eventually loses themselves to the fantasy world of their own creation. What do you mean? My poor child can no longer differentiate between imagination and reality. He's begun to see himself as Thelxy. Oh, crap. Perhaps in his mind, the loneliness he felt became the same as that of a prince who lost everything he ever loved or stood for. That's not good. What? So that's what you meant by uncontrollable delusions. Then we have to help him snap out of it. Alas. Most of the time, he acts as if he can no longer sense or interact with the real world at all. I've had several discussions with the doctor, and we think it is best to try to guide his fantasy. Guide his fantasy? He once wanted to make a picture book of his imaginary world. But since the disorder progressed too quickly, he never quite got past the first page of the book. If we could use this book as a breakthrough for his condition... Here, you can take a look. Okay. Ah, so Zuri's son also saw Felxy as a penguin. Oh, he looks so sad. What we should do now is help him complete this picture book. However, we'll lead the story to a different ending. One where the water imprint is eventually able to restore his kingdom with the help of his friends. We'll need okay. to chase away his loneliness and sorrow, and let him perceive a world full of hope again. That's what I mean by guiding his fantasy. He should be interesting. If we just need to finish the picture book, why does Fremenay need to make a Thelxy as well? Because we need to treat the book's story seriously, as if it's a history of things that have really happened. 
We'll need to go on a journey like Thalxi and help him regain his crown and country. She. But my child can no longer go on a journey of his own. This is why I commissioned Fremenay here to craft a Thalxi, and then I'll paint the journey with this Thalxi into the picture book. Ah, like a stand-in for your son! Paimon's starting to get it now! Oh, you really put a lot of thought into this, Zuria. Um, Paimon still has one question, though. Where will we be able to find a Water M Kingdom? There are some question. ruins on the seabed of the Salacia Plains. I've already asked Fremenay to research them for me. We'll be able to use one of the ruins as the kingdom. Okay. Oh, so we'll just need to act out a performance of, uh... Oh, a brave journey through the kingdom of water imps. As long as we chase away the monsters in the ruins, it'll count as chasing away the monsters in the water imp kingdom, right? Sadly, no. We won't just be putting on a performance. It's just as Zuria said. We need to take this seriously. And the only way we can take this seriously is if we choose to believe everything that's happening is real. Oh, crap. Uh, so we'll be playing it straight? Or, uh, making it a fully immersive experience? Oh, well, neither of those really sound right. Uh, well, either way, we'll still be able to help, right? We got this. It's all right. There's no need to get that serious. It's not a big deal. I believe in my son. We can just see this as him wanting to stay asleep for a bit longer, because he's so enamored with his dream. <sighs> Zuria. Keep your spirits up, everyone. If we were to look troubled, my son is sure to become anxious as well. Hmm. I should be heading back right about now to check on my son. Eh? Yeah. We temporarily moved to a place on the hill over there, so my son will have a better spot to convalesce. It's not far from the water, and there's also a great view. Feel free to come find me if anything urgent comes up. Understood. There's also one last thing. Since these two friends were able to help me out, I've made some more progress on Thelxi. I estimate that he should be ready sometime tomorrow. That's great news. I must thank you all. Hmm. With that in mind, how about we meet here in two days' time to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps? Sounds good. All right, everyone. Let's meet again in another two days. Zuria sure is a brave and optimistic lady. Fremenay, do you think her plan will work out? Uh, let's discuss that over by the tent. There were a few things that I didn't bring up because the Madame was here. Yeah. So let's talk to Femi first. Uh. One. What is it, Fremine? What did you want to say? <clears throat> If you don't mind me asking, I would like the two of you to mentally prepare yourselves. <sighs> this is the first time that you've met anyone with the syndrome, right? I know you two are both really strong and will do everything you can to help the child. But with the syndrome being the way it is, if things don't... <sighs> If things don't quite turn out as we wish, I hope you'll be able to accept the outcome and not put too much blame on yourselves. Fremine, why do you bring this up all of a sudden? Didn't we just promise Zuria that we'll be optimistic about everything working out? It's not that I'm not optimistic. It's just... You know this inner really well? So that's why you looked like you knew exactly what she was talking about. Wait, Fremine, don't tell Paimon that you also... No, no. Please don't misunderstand. I've oh. never had it. Okay. I've just... I've just seen many cases of it at the House of the Hearth, back when we lived under the previous director. 
They say there are many factors surrounding the development of this illness. I've heard everything from hereditary factors in one state of mind to environmental factors and even ley line disorder effects. Oof. Some even say it could be caused by contamination from god remains. And from the cases I've seen, there weren't many positive outcomes. In the worst cases, the patient could even pass away. Damn. What? It could get that serious? The near Pyron thought they'd just stop talking as much. <sighs> yeah, that's just the nature of it. So if you'll find it difficult to cope with the worst case scenario, I would prefer that you back out right now. I don't want you to help only to feel like you failed. Hey, now's not the time to be joking around. <sighs> don't worry, Fremine. No matter how hard it might get, we'll be able to handle it. Really? <sighs> then in that case, let's see this real life fantasy adventure together to the end. Yeah! Uh, but Paimon has a question. If this illness can really be as bad as you've described, then do you really think Zuria's method will be able to help? After all, we'll just be using a toy as Delxi and some ruins as the Kingdom of Water Imps. The whole adventure will only be turned into a picture book for her son to read. Well, I think it should be able to do something. To harbor a fantasy means that the child wants to save himself somehow. The only reason he's allowed his dream kingdom to fall is because he's lost control of his heart. Oof. But if we can help him regain control and escape from the darkness, we'll be able to change his world. Like helping someone who's lost their voice be able to speak again. Oh, Paimon sees what you're saying now. Huh. How do you understand all of this so well, Fremine? Hmm. Well, maybe because I have also had many of my own dreams in the past. I even had my own fairy tale world, much like that boy's. I was able to draw a lot of support from it. So I believe in the power of fantasy worlds. So the penguin tower you mentioned was. <sighs> So you remembered. What penguin town? Why doesn't Paimon remember? Is that also a fairy tale world? Don't leave Paimon in the dark! Sheesh. Suddenly, Fremini pulls out a diving helmet and puts it on his head. Hey, why did you put that on? <clears throat> it's just one of my personal quirks. Please pay it no mind. Yeah. Anyway, Penguin Town is a peaceful place with lots of penguin residents. Mm. They're all really good at making clockwork toys. Yeah. And Pear is the town's triumphant hero, as well as the one who quietly protects the whole place. Yeah. Pear? But didn't you make Pear yourself? Well... I often think that Pear only came to me because he realized how much I needed him. So it's not so much that I made Pear, as Pear chose me as his friend. Uh, Fremine, are you sure you're not losing control of your fantasies as well? No, I don't think so. I can still differentiate between fantasy and reality. I just believe that the fairy tale world of my dreams must also exist somewhere. Right. It might just be hidden, which is why it's difficult to see. Or it will only reveal itself at very specific times. Specific times? Like when you put on your diving helmet? Yeah. That's the general idea of it. Really? Pyra just said that because you put on your helmet. Have you ever observed the surface world from underwater? It's as if you're viewing a whole different world from the outside. It's a very surreal feeling. Both alienating, but also as if you're being protected by something. I have a similar feeling when I put on my diving helmet. In those moments, 
it's possible to see some truly wondrous things as if a fairy tale has become reality it's almost like a sort of miracle okay really like a miracle well if that's in order i'm just kidding hey don't you still need time to work on Thugsy's weapon we don't want to keep you from finishing your commission right I still have to collect some tools I'll need to craft the weapon. I've got to finish everything before tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me, Paimon. I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for you to try my helmet. Thanks for all of your help. I'll be off for now. Let's meet up here again in two days. And I believe that's the end of part one. So... Event introduction. Okay, on with it. Motherboard troubleshooting. Okay. So part one and part two available. Part three will unlock in four hours. What is this? So, I, so there are two mini games that are available. Okay, hold on just a freaking moment. One week later. Is your child feeling any better? Thank you for your concern, Fremenet. His condition is fairly stable. The family doctor said we might be able to take him out for a stroll today. Hmm. <laughs> Seems like everyone's arrived now. Not quite. Aren't we missing someone? But Paimon has a guess where he might be. Hey, Thalxy! Oh, right. The robot. Is it wielding a spear or some kind? Indeed. That with his weapons sword? in hand, Thalxy looks more formidable than ever. That's if more like a spear to me, design-wise. Yes, you really had a good eye for materials. Everything you found was high quality. Speaking of which, Zuria just told me that she wants to end the adventure with the coronation ceremony. So, uh... Could I also trouble you with finding some materials for the crown? You can just keep an eye out for them on our way to the ruins. I was planning to collect the materials myself, but then I realized you might be able to find some prettier ones than what I could get my hands on. Consider it done. Seems like everything's ready to go. Shall we head out? Please wait a moment. I was just thinking. Since Thalxy has already shown us his brand new appearance, we may already be able to draw a new page in the picture book. What do you think? Ooh, Paimon's excited now! So, what should we draw on the page? Hmm. Why don't we use the story we know as a reference? Just make the atmosphere a bit less grim. So we'll take out the sad parts and replace them with happier stuff? Sounds great to Paimon! All right, I'll give it a try. I'm not very adept at drawing, but I've seen a lot of art during my work. Now, as far as the actual content of the drawing, please tell me what you'd like to see. Let me think. We can draw the weapon. The prince has picked up the Sword of Courage and the Shield of Perseverance, which proves he has crossed the Mire of Doubt and now is ready to wage war against the darkness. Okay, I'll add the weapons. Anything else? Paimon wants to give him some friends. thalxy has got some friends by his side now, so he's no longer fighting alone. Okay, I'll also draw some companions. Anything else? 
Don't forget to add some color. Color. Ah, oh, color. Yes, that's really important. The road in front of him now will no longer be just grayscale, but bursting with color and hope. Who would have thought the page could have become so inspiring? How wonderful. Splendid ideas, everyone. Great! Everyone looks super pumped up. Felsy most of all. Are you seeing this, my son? Are you feeling inspired by this as well? Looks like Delcy is motivated. I'm sure he is, Zuria. And this is still just the first page. That's right! Paimon can't wait to see the picture book when it's all finished! We should finish it as soon as possible and keep up the belief and hope in our hearts! Mm-hmm. I'm starting to look forward to it as well. So let's get the show on the road and head towards the Kingdom of Water Imps. Yay! Thalsi's fantastic adventures begin now! And part two of Thalsi's fantastic adventure begins. After some time, you arrive at the shore above the underwater Kingdom of Water Imps. Oh. I love to drive. Ooh. Let's do this. Look for materials to make the crown. Look, those are materials that we can use for the crown, right? Let's get some for Fremine. Gotcha. And it's one more way over here. These should be enough. I knew you'd have a knack for finding the best materials. We shouldn't need anything else to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps. Whoa. Is that the entrance to the underwater ruins ahead? This is the entrance. Huh. Assaulting the Water Imp Kingdom. The beautiful kingdom of water imps is at hand. Warriors, together with Prince Tauxi, reclaim it from the monster occupying it. Okay. Unleashes a shockwave at Tauxi's position, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies. So. The character. You know what? I'm gonna do the usual stuff. Biden. Sarah, where the heck is Bennett? Bennett and Azua. It works. Remember, I'm going in 100% completely blind. I didn't check out any walkthroughs or reaction videos and whatnot. I'm going in 100% completely blind. So these are the underwater ruins that Fremine found. They're pretty amazing, but still not exactly the kind that Paimon was imagining. This is the Kingdom of Water Imps, Paimon. Not ruins, buddy. Oh, yeah, Paimon knows. It's just... <sighs> Paimon thought we'd actually see a fairy tale world. Like with the Water Imps' colorful houses and the Rainbow Bridge. I'm sorry. I was hoping to put up some decorations, but ran out of time to do it by myself. It's okay. It's fantasy time now. Whoa, someone's already switched into fantasy mode. Seems like the travelers already got the gist of things. You should do your best too, Paimon. Uh, don't underestimate Paimon! Paimon can flip the switch too! Now entering... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Ahem. Young adventurers, tis Paimon, guardian goddess of this land. State your goals and intentions for visiting this nation. <sighs> we are the companions of Prince Thalxi, your Divine Highness. We have come to help him reclaim the glory that he has lost. Oh, reclaiming your glory? 
Thy goddess here has golden glory, silver glory, and bronze glory. Which is it that the prince has lost? Golden huh? glory, of course. <sighs> okay. And did you break character, Paimon? No, no, no! This is the goddess's test! <clears throat> From your responses, the goddess has concluded that you're all brave adventurers without the taint of greed in your hearts. As such, you are worthy of everyone's respect. So please accept the goddess's reward. The goddess will now bestow all three types of glory upon you. And as for this prince, the goddess will also bestow upon you the rainbow glory. So your future will always be filled with light. My gratitude to your Divine Highness for such generous blessings. Power is now surging through every part of my body. Uh, me... Me too. Is this the Divine Inspiration of Legend? All thanks to the power of Goddess Paimon. <laughs> now adventurers! Forge bravely ahead and defeat the monsters that have taken over the kingdom. You will be sure to find that which you seek. Use Prince Taxi's Water in Chanson to defeat opponents more easily. After using this skill, Taxi must charge up before being able to use it again. Please be careful, brave adventurers. Just Those accursed enemies are back again. Your Highness. We're under attack again. It's a lava troll of the deep. There's no need to fear, my friends. His Highness is so strong now that even a divinitural of the deep would pose no threat to him. Let's... No turning back. Quiver. Too fast. <sighs> Too furious. So have we defeated the evil monsters and reclaimed the Kingdom of Water Imps? Yes, it should now be time for us to attend Thuxi's coronation ceremony. The only thing is, I didn't expect this to go so smoothly. I thought it would have taken longer for us to reach the heart of the ruins. It was my mistake. I should have told Fremenay earlier that we would also need a crown. The Traveler and Goddess Paimon were too strong! We just eradicated all the monsters in one go! It's okay, Zaria. We can come back again once I've made the crown. Then I must thank all of you again for taking the time. And you too, Thalxi, my child. Okay, at least Thalxi is motivated. But seriously, Holy Force, please fix the lip sync of the of this fighting. game for my sake. I don't think there's anything that will be able to stop him. He's like a true prince now. Yes, I agree as well. Honkai is able to, able to do it, so Gen Let's head back to camp. So Genshin team, you guys should be able to do it as well. To search for some materials on the way because I want to make you the guys better not give me the nonsense that you oh we can't fix the. This game has been ongoing for the past well. for three now years and we can't fix the the new scene. What? It's time for us to draw some new scenes in the picture book. That's nonsense. That is absolutely nonsense. If Honkai Star Rail is able to fit to match their lip sync, then Genshin yeah, team, you guys should be able to do it as well. Really wants to update the picture book. You just want to see someone draw Goddess Paimon, don't you? Hey, you didn't have to see it out loud. Oh, I'm sorry, because I'm an <laughs> asshole. No problem, I'm happy to oblige. Then in that case, the story today should go something like this. After overcoming many obstacles, Prince Thelxi and his brave companions finally arrived at the entrance to the Kingdom of Water Imps. 
At this time, the little fairy in the group, Paimon, revealed her true goddess form to her companions. The goddess has arrived! She praised the companions for their purity, and to reward them, she bestowed upon them many blessings, and even prayed that the prince would be able to fulfill his goal. Bathed under the goddess's glory, the prince and his companions charged into the bastion of evil, chased away the monsters, and rescued the pretty water imps from their imprisonment. The prince finally managed to reclaim his kingdom, but as for the crown... Oh no! The crown isn't ready yet! No. The crown was within the prince's reach, but the monsters took it with them as they fled. They haven't given up and are sure to return, but the prince is certain to reclaim the crown the next time they fight. The brilliant rainbow shall descend onto the kingdom once more. talented at drawing. Thank you, everyone. We've also completed the second page of the picture book now. Thelxie's journey is one step closer to its end and the promised coronation. My child, you'll also be able to brighten up when that time comes, right? I'm sure he will, Zuria. Who knows? Perhaps the doctor will already have some good news for you when you get back home today. I sure hope so, your divine highness. Oh, Fremine, about the time you'll need for the crown. Please don't worry. One day should be more than enough. In other uh, words... Then I must thank you for your hard work. All right, let's rendezvous here in another two days' time for our final adventure, okay? Sounds good to me. And see you in two days, my lovely friends. I'm pretty sure Family has something to say once Surya is out of the equation. Might be wrong. Alright, it's about time we start heading off too. You've still got some work to do, right, Fremine? Yeah, I'll need to go to the city shortly to get some parts for the base of the crown. I want to try out a few different designs, and choose the one that looks the best. You're really dedicated. Yeah. Paimon knew that you didn't often take commissions from others, but Paimon had no idea you'd be so dedicated once you're on the job. Ah, uh, well, about that... It might be because... Uh, Go on. Because what? It's because... I hope... Buddy, uh, your face is kinda what's red. What's the matter? And what's with that look on your face? You're turning red! And it looks like you're about to run away and put your helmet on again! Uh, Enough with the teasing already, my red? boy. Yeah. <laughs> alright, alright! We won't bother you anymore for today, Fremine. Let's see each other in two days' time. Okay. Thank you. See you in two days. See ya. I'm pretty sure there's more to this than... I hope that everyone who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. But well, that was surprisingly short. A little longer than a few minutes later. Today's the final day of Thunksy's fantastic adventures. Let's go find Fremine at his camp. Right. Let's do this. Hello, Paimon. Hello, Traveler. Did 
Depending on the situation, it might be a short one. Yes, we're just waiting for Zuria now. She hasn't arrived yet. Oh. Well, let's wait for her a little while. Or actually, maybe we can go find her. It's not too far from here anyway. Didn't she say she just lives on the hill over there? Hey, traveler, Paimon. Oh, and speaking of. Well. Found you two at long last. De la Roche? I'm so glad that you both are all right. Huh? Why are you here, Miss Delaroche? And what could have happened to us? What could have happened? That water imp Thelxie, of course. After I gave you that commission the other day, I began to get worried and went asking about the boy that went missing. Oh, that? We've got it all figured out now. The boy you heard about was just Framine. Even the missing fish was his fault. Don't worry, we'll help you get the fish back as soon as we're done with this job. Oh, sorry about that. I've been diving in the area recently. Huh? What, Fremine? Diving? No, 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 that's not what happened at all. I've heard a completely different account. What? What I was told is that about a month ago, a child tied a bunch of heavy seashells onto his body and walked into this open stretch of water. He never came back. What could that be if not that water imp's work? Oh dear, uh, that's a different case. Are... Uh, are you sure? One hundred percent sure. I've confirmed the account with several veteran fishermen I know. The child was only eight years old. His name was Lesko. Lesko Destray. Wait, Lesko Destray? Why? Yeah, that's the name. They say the family took on the name after moving to the city from a place called Stray. Anyway, his mother is a pretty famous art dealer, while his father passed away from an accident many years ago. Uh-oh. Oh, well, naturally, his mother was devastated by the incident and fell terribly ill. It's said that she left the court of Fontaine, and no one knows where she's gone. Oh, no. It, it, it can't be, right? Lesko Destre? Zuria Destre? It, it, it must be some sort of a coincidence? You know what's going on in my on my mind right now, chat? Is that there's a possibility that the Scott is dead and Zulia is being in I might be wrong, but let's pay a visit to the Destry house first. I'm sorry, miss. We've gotta go check on something right now. Oh, I see. Well, you go on ahead. I just came to make sure that you're both all right. I'll head back then. Uh, please remember to take care. Right. Let me swap to Yelan. We'll wish the house was still busy. I might have I have a bad feeling about this. I might be wrong. <sighs> Buddy, ever since 4.2, right? We have been getting nothing but stories that is heartbreaking is and is depressing. Who are you? I have a patient here who needs quiet bed rest. Please leave us be unless you have anything urgent to report. Who is this patient? The door opens after a brief moment of silence. A man walks this out. This is the residence of Zuria Destree, and I am Jala Khan, her family doctor. What did you mean by your question just now? Who else could be my patient? Your patient should be Zuria's son, right? She told us herself that her son had contracted loneliness syndrome. No, you're right. Young Master Lesko did have that illness once upon a time, but he's... Well, the young master's oh, no longer with us. Oh, no! And now Madame has come down with the same illness. Are you... 
her friends by any chance? I called it. Oh, I freaking so called when it. She had requested oh my time gosh. to go out over the past few days. It was so she could spend them with you. So if I'm understanding this right, oh the my one who's god, from what the hell man? is the madame herself. She believes her son is still alive? That is correct. When the young master disappeared, she was organizing an art exhibit that she had specifically prepared for him. But since she had to leave the house, she was unable to see her son one oh last time. Oh my gosh, what That the might hell? have been the trigger for her regret. Or perhaps the family's fall into loneliness and grief was inevitable as soon as the old master passed away. First the son, and then the mother. But how could that be? She really looked like she had a handle on everything. Her smile was so lovely, and she even told us to stay optimistic. But you're saying she... Those actions are proof that she can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Oh my and god. All the other things that she told us about her son, were those fake too? No, those were all real. Although, they were all things that happened before the young master left us for good. Madame's time has just never moved forward since his passing. I see. So after her son left, she created a fantasy world where her son was still with her. She was looking for a way to cure his illness when she ran into us. So, how is Zuya now? She has been in a good mood the past few days, even humming a song when she returned from her stroll. She even began discussing with me the idea of using deliberate guidance to ease the illness. It was all going well. What's up, Apex? Until last night. She spent a whole night staring at the shell the young master left behind. And the words that he had inscribed onto it. Then she broke down once more. I prescribed some sedatives and she's currently resting. Oh my gosh. But then what should we do? How can we help her? There has to be something we can do. Don't panic, Paimon. Even though this is a devastating piece of news, we must all calm down first. <sighs> this is a lot to What should hear. we do? I need to think. I need to remember the old house of the hearth and the children who lived in it. Those patients and what their doctors said back then. Ah, hmm. uh, what if? Dr. Jalakon, have you seen a picture book? The Madame should have brought it back with her. Hmm. Are you thinking about trying the guidance therapy she talked to me about before? Well, it's worth a shot. I'll go get the book. Doctor quickly retrieves the book and hands it to yes, Femi. This is it. You still need to finish the adventure and the picture book? That's right. If what Dr. Jean Lacan said was true, the past few days have been very helpful to Zuria. So we should complete this journey. We need to show her that her child has found a happy ending in the world of her dreams. But... But wouldn't that just make it harder for her to accept reality? One must first face reality before accepting it. The Madame has been crushed by her feelings of grief and can no longer bring herself to face reality. In other words, she's Our first denial. priority would be to get her out of this state. Right. Before today, I had thought she wanted to use Thelxi's fantastic adventures to save her son. But now, I think she might need it to save herself. Oh, God. And I if we could right. complete it, we should be able to give her some feeling of inspiration and closure. Maybe those feelings would be enough to give her some courage to face reality again. Wonder those posts about...
There's no time to waste. Let's set off right away. I wonder those posts about I can't go through this again and then the, the memes, man. The memes. Dear Lord. What, what have I got myself into? Oh my goodness gracious. Oh gosh. What have I got myself into, man? Yeah, let's just head over to the Kingdom of Water Inns. David Hoyerverse, ever since we stepped into Fontaine, man, we, all we have I've been getting is nothing but depress, depression story quests. Like, what the hell? It all started with Furina story quests, but not really. Furina is not really depressing. More like Aquan Quest Chapter 4, Act 5, where it was revealed what Furina really is. And then. Nubilis to Egress, where he lost a good friend, not one friend, not one good friend, but two good friends, which I went through yesterday, and now this! Oh gosh. Oh. Fontaine is the, the nation of justice. More like the the nation of depression. Oh my gosh! Okay, okay. Unleash your shock wave at taxi position. You know what? Squid, I'll bring in Raiden hypercarrying. Uh, that's the freaking thing. I just, I just don't know. Um, how, what's what to expect in Netland? Because my mindset. Um, my thoughts on Netland is since it's the nation, um, since the Archon is the god of war, right? I was thinking that Netland is in a state of hell, and yeah, so that's why I had in mind. I, I just, I just can't see a, a depressing story fit in into the. The nation of Netland, but we'll just but that we'll just see how how it play how whoever's does their storylines because oh my goodness, Fontaine has been nothing but depressing storylines. Like what the I hell? Felix's journey, but the most important person is missing. Everyone, please don't be so down and gloomy. Remember what she told us. If we were to feel troubled, the patient would become anxious as well. <sighs> exactly. You're right. Paimon needs to smile. If we have to give something to Zuria, it should be our smiles. We have to keep smiling as we finish this adventure. And then she'll be able to recover, right everyone? Hopefully. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Oh. Be careful, brave adventure. Watch out, everyone! They're coming at us again! No critical damage for them. No critical damage for them. So are we getting cutscene right now? I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I made a promise to my friends and I'm already very late. But Madame, you're still... Don't try to stop me. Today's the most important day for treating Thelpsy. We'll use the guidance method. Didn't you also say that you'd think it'd work? I'm not trying to stop you, madame. It's just... <sighs> could you tell me the name of your child? Dr. Jalakon, how can you forget the My name Raiden? of your own patient? Hopi's emblem. His name is Thelxi. He's the prince of the Kingdom of Water Imps. 
We will go today to reclaim his crown and attend his coronation ceremony. I see. Madame, please rest assured, everything is still on schedule. Your friends have already departed to find... Wait. Look, they've already returned. On everyone, have you really? Yes, but the coronation ceremony still hasn't taken place because we felt like you should be the one to preside over it. Wonderful, how wonderful! Felxy, my child, my child, are you hearing this? Everything you lost will now come back to you, and soon, very soon, you will never be lonely again. And the last page of the picture book. It's still waiting for you to illustrate in color. Right. The picture book. The picture book. Give me a moment, I will show and you. I don't know what I, I should you put my on the last right page. Don't worry. Felixy and his friends all know what she got it. Get ready, Zuria. We'll describe everything for you. Okay, okay. <clears throat> At last! his friends were able to drive off the final invading monsters and achieve a dashing victory because it's better if i show you rather than i talk to you and about the recovered it. crown resplendent the water imps finally returning to their homes showered the prince with love and applause as he greeted them they once again offered their precious shells to the prince and reconstructed the rainbow bridge of old as he watched the scene unfold, the prince could not help but be touched by its beauty. Moved by everyone's happiness, the prince stepped onto the Rainbow Bridge and took a good look at all the friends who had gone on the journey with him. There stood the Traveler, Goddess Paimon, Fremine, and... Huh? Where's the last person? The prince looked frantically around, but could not find the person he wanted to see most. At that moment, the person suddenly appeared on the other side of the bridge. She walked towards him with a smile and slowly lifted her veil. The prince could not hold back his tears. He recognized then that the mysterious person that had been by his side the whole time was none other than his mother. Surya walked across the bridge and placed the crown above the prince's head. She smiled down upon him as she said, My prince, my king, you shall never, ever need to feel lonely again. That's the end of the story, Surya. Thank you. Thank you all. I am so sorry, my child. Maman should have spent more time with you. Did you hear the story? You'll never have to feel lonely again. Sorry. <laughs> Maman loves you too. What's happening? Is Zuria talking to Thelxy? Quick! Put on my diving helmet! There's a transcription module in it that's compatible with Thelxy's output signals. You should be able to use it to understand what Thelxy's saying. Raminate walks up to you and pulls out his diving helmet before placing it on your head. Oh my god. Oh my god. This, this is so Mama. Mama loves you too. This is so But I love you more, Mama. What? Did you see something? Mama, I'm getting a little sleepy. 
If it's time for bed, can you hum a lullaby to me again? Of course, my dearest child. As long as you want to hear it, Mama will always hum for you. Your lullaby has always been my favorite. Now that I've heard it, I can return to my dream and to the kingdom of water imps in peace. <sighs> my poor darling. Please don't forget. I will always love you. My love <laughs> is... Greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. <laughs> I won't forget, Mamon. And so is my love for you. Greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. Good night, Mamon. That was a beautiful thing of this. Oh my gosh. Three days later at Feminist Camp. Traveler, Paimon, you're here. Fremine, why did you call us in such a hurry? Did you hear something from Zuria? Oh, if it's not good news, Paimon doesn't want to hear it. Don't worry, it's definitely great news. The Madame came here for a visit just now with her doctor. Color has returned to her cheeks, and she sounded full of energy as well. Oh. She said she'd like to return to the court to continue hosting the art exhibit. But this time, she'll work with her doctor to exhibit some picture books related to the illness. Oh, that's good to hear. Of course. Thelxie's fantastic adventures and the guidance therapy will be included in the exhibit as well. She'd like to use her experience to help others. That's wonderful! <sighs> so it wasn't bad news after all. Mm -hmm. Here, please take this picture book with you. The Madame wanted you to have it. If at some point in the future you were to run into someone with similar troubles, she hopes the book would be of use to you. Okay. Uh, but this is her son's story, right? Is it really okay to give the book to us? Don't worry, it's just a copy. She oh. still has the original. It's extremely important to her. Alright, then there's no problem! <sighs> it feels good knowing we've contributed to something important. Paimon definitely didn't expect the fantasy adventure to be so useful. Paimon was a little worried about how everything would turn out. After all, fantasy is just fantasy. Paimon, do you know what the Madame said? She said that at the moment when she placed the crown on Thelxie's head, she felt like she really saw something beautiful. Her child had returned, and he told her that he loved her. Yeah, that was the robot. She also thing. said that was when she was finally able to bid farewell to her son. She felt like at that moment, she was healed by some mystical power, and she was filled with courage from head to toe. Oh, really? But could that just be another part of her fantasy? Perhaps. But if fantasy is just fantasy, and the fantasy world is not real, then how could it still grant us these powers that we can continue to use in the real world? Perhaps fantasy, not just fantasy after all. But, but what else can it be? A descent of the fairy tale world into the real world. At that time, the wondrous fairy tale temporarily became reality and influenced real things in our world. That has to be what happened. You saw it too, didn't you? 
Yeah, we we saw that she turned into a boy from a robot. Yes, I suppose that would be a miracle. Yeah, I hope that happen everyone after. who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. And that's the end of Delxy's uh, Fantasies Adventures. Oh. And I just realized it is right away. Because priority priority to the, the to entering uh the third chapter of the taxi fantasy fantasy adventures this kid did not appear i have no idea how much more depressing storyline genshin is gonna give us from here on out man. <laughs>